Hey, hi, how are you? I've got a really lot of things to say here, so I'm just going to get to it. Is that okay? All right. <laughs> a poem about the importance of writing poems. I have probably written more poems in my time here on this planet than I can remember. But what I do remember of my poems is that they have gotten me through. Through diagnosis, to treatment, to death in the family, with headphones on, with cigarette stained fingertips, writing poems, anxious thoughts accompanying me. Every red line train stop, every red line train stop hoping it would get better and no one would when I would get off. My mind would finally stop pacing around the train station, but if those batteries died, those thoughts got so much louder, and it happened many times. Thirsty. Anyway, back to this poem. <laughs> free prose. I use the words free prose when I want to write free poems. I use the words free prose when I want to tell a story. Free prose when I want to write without judgment. I write quick, let my feet hit the pavement like a marathon runner. Play the piano, let each note fall into place, let the paint splash like Pollock, who by the way was diagnosed an alcoholic, whose painting stand in the Tate Museum. I was once a Rembrandt, reference the poem I wrote titled Waste of Paint. I once was Tom Brady. I once was a manic psych ward celebrity. I once was depressed, smoking, in medicine-stained hallways. I was diagnosed and sent home from countless psych ward stays. But yet I stand. I stand strong so many years gone, I still hold on to that thing called hope. That I can cope, get through this mentality, this ill mentality, the idea that the past is behind me and that the sun still shines with me. My mind, it might be a work of God and the devil, both playing position in my temple. It's really not that simple. What does medication do but numb you, frustrate you, and sedate you, maybe save you like God do? Maybe I should go back to the beginning, write my way through to get through to you. I was born in Troy, New York, not Michigan. Moved to Grafton, then at eight years old, I moved to Mansfield, Massachusetts. Right outside of Boston and Providence, safely stashed in a little Nice town, a small little pin on the map. I am the youngest of four. My brother is five years older than me. My sisters are 12 years older than them, than him. It's just one brother. Um, I want to say more, but I don't want to offend them. I love them. My dad and mom divorced when I was 15. That's when I started Oddball Magazine, which I still carry with me, oddballmagazine.com, just saying. Um, <laughs> That's when I was diagnosed ADHD. No big deal, I thought. Kept on, found pot, got good grades, went to college, and in the first year I began to lose sleep. Increasing the weed, I thought I didn't need Ritalin or any medication. Nope, just lived like Bob Marley. But I still couldn't sleep. Eventually, lack of sleep broke me and I had my first manic episode. That was something I never had before and something I never knew was possible, something I couldn't control. I wrote and thought I just had a strong soul, and through it all, I kept on writing those poems. So many poems. Oh, remember this poem? It's about poems. <laughs> I was 21, the first one. I was 22 when the depression came on, and I went back to that school, and soon the manic came calling, and I walked myself 36 miles to a hospital stay. I wrote a book of poems. It was called Journal of a Madman. I wrote it in McLean. I never published it. It was really anti-Bush. <laughs> and if you ever want to know what that manic episode was like, definitely read that book. <laughs> that was my last hospital stay extended. This, things eventually got better. I made friends with a girl on my first day at work, and presently I write this poem lying beside her. I traveled the world with her, and last week just got back from Paris. And in 2014, I asked her for her hand in marriage. Was it her love that got me through? Absolutely. With her help, I enrolled back in school. Got my degree in 2008 and the English Award of Achievement. Thank you, Jill Burrill. Thank you, Bunker Hill. Yeah, you're a great school. <laughs> Ron, which, Jill Burrill was a great professor. You would have learned something if you were her teacher. All right, anyway. What? All right. <laughs> started performing poetry at speakouts and became a beast, a regular Walt Whitman, who, by the way, was a manic depressive and one of the best poets who's ever written. 
I have written so many poems and now I teach it like a prescription. And yeah, I have anxiety, I'm smoke-free, drug-free, and hoping to have children. I'm a beast at this recovery thing. I've been working on myself for a long time. I read Bukowski for therapy and Chuck Palahniuk for a laugh. And I'm in love with Leonard Cohen, Sylvia Plath, and Emily Dickinson. And one of them, if not all of them, has some form of mental illness. And all of them, yes, all of them, yeah, all of them were brilliant. I'll listen to Pete Rock and hip hop and just go off. Or I'll put on like Philip Glass when I really want to try something new or jazz when I want to free prose it. But yeah, poems. Remember this poem, it's about how I write poems. <laughs> yeah, poems, they got me through. It's one thing to have a mental illness. It's another thing to let it define you. I'm a peer specialist now and teach recovery is a meaningful pursuit. It's lifelong, but it's possible. I'm living proof. And I'm an editor of Oddball Magazine. Held on to that dream, still publish it daily. Still have anxiety and a diagnosis, but don't let it fade me. And yes, life is beautiful, so beautiful. Once I smoked and suffered with mental Tourette's. I think that's a thing, I think, I, I think it's a thing. I, it's, it's gotta be, because that's what it is. I don't know how to, else how to explain it. But I think it's a thing. You can coin it after me if you want. All right. Once I smoked and suffered with mental Tourette's, freaked out so bad, lost so many friends, could barely go outside or even speak this poem out loud. Definitely not in front of a crowd or even beyond this little soapbox I am on right now. But now I'm proud because I'm different and exist in different statistics. And now I can get through this life, no doubt. Don't get me wrong, I have my difficulties, but I still have so much to prove. With my wife beside me, I write this to you. This might not be the best story, but it is mine. And I haven't even told you everything in my life, or even told you the greatest hits. I could tell you I went on Wheel of Fortune and was super anxious. Did not win. <laughs> not even close. Bankrupt twice. <laughs> Lose a turn once. I don't even use vowels normally when I play. But I, I had like $800 and I asked for a vowel. <laughs> I actually looked it online. And they looked at me, and, they, and, and the guy, the per, there's like this Wheel of Fortune thing online, and they basically said, he played the dumbest game of Wheel of Fortune ever. <laughs> but there's like people who obsess over this stuff, and that's fine. I love Wheel of Fortune. Cool. I was anxious. Can't believe I'm still up here. All right. I got a lot more pages left. I'm doing this. I could tell you I'm a peer specialist, which I already did, but that's okay because I'm super proud of it. And I'm writing another book, a book of poems I wrote on the red line. Most of them are anxiety induced. They, uh, those were my thoughts at the time. I also have another book. Yeah, I usually have it on me. So if you have 10 bucks on you, I'll sign a copy. I don't know. I could tell you a lot of things, but I can tell you this and let me slow it down so you can hear it. This is like the slowest I've ever read a poem in my life. It's because of the, the pronunciation and everything, you know? But I'm gonna slow it down even more for you because this is ridiculous how slow I'm going. Mental illness is just a label you put on someone brilliant. Mental illness is just a DSM-5 definition. Mental illness is not mental illness. It is simply a condition that some people have to live with. And yes, mental illness is stigmatized and some don't understand it. And they blame it for violence in the streets with no facts behind it. And yes, psychology is a science. And mania is beautiful. Anyone who has been through it knows how the world speaks the truth to you. And anxiety killed my nephew. Not a drug addiction. And I know one thing, mental illness is not just medication. It's really just a part of my life, but it's not the whole part. I have a loving wife with a good heart. I have friends and family, and yeah, I have anxiety. Sometimes my thoughts broadcast. I'm not a huge fan of live TV and sometimes talk to plants. Just kidding about that last part. <laughs> but maybe there was a time when I lived and died by the pen, writing as fast as I could because that's all I could do to get through, to get through the anxiety, the paranoia, the diagnosis of schizoaffective, which is supposed to be a pretty bad one, so I'm working on it. Well, but look at me now, kind of jet lagged from getting back from Paris, when if you saw me in 2010 on the train, writing feverishly with headphones on, and you probably did, because I was on the train all the time, you would never think I would be this international jet setter. That's the fastest part of the poem. 
But then again, people can get better. People can do great things. I won't lie and say I didn't have anxiety because I did, but I did it. Because I have a condition doesn't mean I won't ever be anxious, but I have a life and I live it. So here I am writing a poem about writing poems. Writing in my home on a Saturday night, not a eulogy, not a letter to a lost loved one. Nope, writing about that little word, hope. A long poem about that little word, hope. Maybe chaotic, nonlinear, almost like a manic episode. One that I can control. One that fills me with that most powerful of words called hope. And with hope comes strength. Hope for the future with strength to move forward, strength to keep moving, with the motion and the movement. So I make my words heard and I change every one of your mindset. Mental illness doesn't define me. Nope, it doesn't. It makes me shine like a diamond. It makes me happy at the moment. It makes me write poems. Remember how this poem was about poems? Yeah, I'm no longer alone. I might be anxiety stricken or under control. Depends how strong the dark roast or how much sleep I had the night before. And most likely my hands will be shaking when I read this poem to you out loud, grasping the paper, sweat on the brow, maybe sounding shaky, not so confident, but not right now. I am freaking dominant at the moment. But right now they are typing on the keys so confidently. Sometimes it depends on the day a week. And during the week I'm a peer specialist and speak to schools and give hope, that powerful four letter word, because really that's what I can do. That depression isn't a death sentence. That hearing voices won't break you. That talking to plants or thinking you can do it, that I live those experiences makes me grateful. Because schizoaffective once scared the shit out of me. But now I just shake it off and keep moving. I have too much on my mind, too much stuff to be doing. That every time I think that it's the end, I break on through like Morrison and get through it. And so can you. You also can do this. OCD is fine with me. Bipolar Hendrix had it. And Van Gogh was depressed and Monet painted water lilies. I saw them, I could smell the paint, I was just at it. And Princess Leia had mania, and she was an author, and a friggin' princess. <laughs> and Lincoln was our best president, and he did it living with depression. And Beethoven was deaf and wrote the dopest music. So what makes you think you can't do it? Talk to me after the show, I'll tell you how I did it. I did it through poems. Remember how this poem is about poems? I did it because I'm different, and I live a manic life, and I live it well. And that's it for now. But I got a lot more poems to write, a lot more stories to tell. And on and on I must stop now, put this poem on pause, kiss my wife softly on her head and thank her for all she does, because I think it all turned around for me when we fell in love. And I will write another poem tomorrow with a cup of coffee, and another one when I'm anxious, another one again at lunch, and another one at breakfast because I'm a poet, a poet with schizoaffective. But now I stop this poem suddenly, take a breath, and exit.